hello everyone. I don't want to say good morning because we're on the West Coast and some of you may be in other parts of the world. I'm Laurie Battaglia with Aligned at Work and we are going to have another LinkedIn Live and I'm really excited about our guest today. Uh, I am pleased to be talking to Rick Murray. Rick is the leader of the Arizona chapter of the National Safety Council and he and I connected recently to talk about their conference and me keynoting their conference. So before I introduce Rick, let me tell you just a little bit about Aligned at Work in case you're new to us. Aligned at Work works with leaders to balance people and profit. And our goal is to solve those people problems before they become profit problems. We talk about looking into the future of work and how our workforce is changing. And we'll get to some of those things today. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Rick so he can introduce himself. Give us a little of your background and tell us about you. Well, certainly. Uh, thank you for, for uh, inviting me today, too, Laurie. It's, been, it's a great opportunity here. But I'm a, I'm a business guy uh, who actually ended up in, in safety. I, I was the CEO of the Arizona Small Business Association. I, I ran the Arizona Dental Association. I am a partner in some assisted living homes. Uh, I've helped dentists transition into retirement by buying and, de buying and selling dental practices. So I'm a business guy that really doesn't know a lot about safety. But as we talk about, you know, certainly with Aligned at Work, how profit and safety really do uh, match up. And, uh, and those are kind of things that I've come on board to be able to help uh, bring that to the forefront uh, for the Arizona chapter here at the National Safety Council. But for us, uh, the Arizona chapter has been around since 1949, believe it or not, 75 years next year. Uh, we started out as the Arizona Safety Association. We were one of 20 other state chapters associated with the National Safety Council, which is uh, headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. The National Safety Council actually started in 1913 and was chartered by Congress back in 1953, along with the Red Cross and the Blue Cross. And we are the Green Cross. So that you, you can see the relationship. But I think that's a, a trivia question that if anybody would want to know. Uh, the Red Cross, obviously, on disaster, Blue Cross on health care. And of course, a Green Cross were about safety. So the National Safety Council, we're a mission based organization. We focus on on eliminating uh, the leading causes of death and injury. Uh, we focus our efforts on on thought leadership that uh, on impacting safety through three uh, strategic pillars: the workplace, roadway, and impairment. Um, there are fifty four thousand member companies around the country uh, that are members of the National Safety Council. Eight and a half million people that are that are employed by those companies, and four hundred of those companies right here in Arizona. Uh, examples of some of the things that we provide here at the Arizona chapter uh, are first aid CPR, uh, defensive driving, roadway flagger, uh, forklift training, uh, uh, fall protection, meaning, you know, if you're on top of a roof, things like that, and OSHA certified required training for uh, the trades professions out there. So that's in a nutshell, kind mm -hmm. of what, what we are as the National Safety Council at the, the Arizona chapter. And I think I think a lot of us still think of when we hear safety, it's either public safety or it's, you know, how many days at work without an accident um, and OSHA regulations that you mentioned and things like that. But when you and I talked, we talked about how we think of it in that realm, but it is really personal. And I'll give you a personal example. I have a new cat. He's not a young cat. Well, he's young compared to my old guy, but um, he's eight years old. And he's a shelter guy and he lived on the street for a while and he is extremely attached to me very quickly. So last week, he and I were both going into the kitchen at the same time, but he's stealth and he walked right under my feet. I stepped down on him and then immediately was down on my hands and knees, right. which yeah. is not really where one wants to be. And I didn't, um, it didn't hurt me badly. I had, you know, some, a uh, little bit of pain in my knees for a couple of days if I, touched them, but that was it. I was lucky. So tell us about, you know, safety kind of from the personal point of view. Well, uh, for your example, you know, slip trips and falls are perhaps the biggest uh, major factor in regards to safety and injury that we see not only at home, but at work. Uh, so uh, for example, your cat getting right under your feet. And, but what about the, around the water cooler? There's uh, maybe somebody spills a little bit of water. And somebody steps on it and slips on that. What about the uh, 
the grape on the grocery store floor uh, mm. that uh, somebody steps on and slips on it. And I've seen that happen myself. But I mean, but most recently, I mean, here I am. I'm the safety guy. How many of us try to put up our own Christmas lights on our house? Uh, hanging, you know, precariously from a ladder or from the side of a house, right? You know, yes. one, one one bad move, and you're going to be you know, out of work in the hospital. You know, whatever that means, you know, and and financially, that's going to mean a lot. Uh, but you know, uh, but certainly psychologically, what does that do to you as well? But and the other side of it, how many of us drive to work every day? You wouldn't think about not putting on your seatbelt, right? But we're also speeding down the highway in these breakneck speeds. And we've got our phone in front of our face and we're trying to you know, text or we're trying to find directions. I mean, our cars sometimes are our biggest enemies because the technology keeps us so distracted from really the job at hand. And, and that's keeping our, our, our car between the, the, the ditches. Right. So, you know, those are the things that we from a distraction standpoint, we were always from just needing to be aware, um, but I, before I, I move on, you know, one of the things I want to add. But how many of us are are prepared to help out in the case of emergency? Um, right. in, in, when, when we look at um, if we're all football fans, is most re recently the Buffalo Bills safety, uh, 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 what uh, Demar Hamlin was his name. He was saved by CPR and an automated de external defibrillator, um, and 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 so. They were trained how to do that, but it doesn't take a lot of training to know CPR. It doesn't take any training. It takes only a third grader to run one of these AEDs. You open it up and it gives you instructions all the way. So some of these things we try to tell these, this is what we try to tell the general public out there. Let's not be intimidated when you're you're confronted with a situation and not be afraid to say something and do something. Yeah, I was surprised to find after after DeMar Hamlin went down on the field and I saw something on TV where a guy opened up the, the defibrillator and it started talking and it guided you right through. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I could do that because my typical response would be I haven't been trained on that. I shouldn't hurt. I'm going to hurt this person more than I'm going to help them. How do I know if they even need it? And it was amazing that, you know, they thought to put a recording in there that just said, OK, now do this, check that, do this next. And and it made it super simple. Um, well, it, it, and, and to that point, I think it, it, though, when we're at the gym, you know, they, those those we see the AEDs on the side of the wall. I, yeah. I, I've been in the gym when I when somebody had a. Uh, had a heart attack um, and, but people, you know, knew how to use those things, but they're very vocal. They're very verbal. And it tells you, walks you through step-by-step step and how to use these things. So, you know, if anybody that's watching is, is ever in those situations, please don't be intimidated. Uh, go get it off the wall or have somebody get it, be there to assist somebody if nothing else. Uh, but they're not intimidating machines by any means at all. Yeah. We really saw evidence in the football game of, of, how you need to react fast and, you know, react really, really fast to save somebody's life or to save them from, um, you know, brain damage that comes from lack of oxygen or something like that. That young man would be dead if it weren't right. for the fast action and it can happen so quickly. And I think a lot of us experienced um, healthcare issues and things like that during the pandemic, or I think it made us, even if it didn't affect us personally, it made everyone a little bit more hyper aware of safety from a personal safety, you know, hand washing and masking and things like that. So it sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, brought safety mainstream. Can you talk for a minute? I want to go back to something that you sort of alluded to, but you talked about how uh, safety can be profitable versus I think a lot of people out there in the world leaders and organizations think of it as an expense. And yeah. um, talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, yeah, we we try to help businesses understand the importance of risk management in their business plan. Um, it, so many times when we talk about eliminating and helping them manage or eliminating that risk, whether it's at home or in, in their business, means greater profits. Uh, uh, the thing about insurance companies is that they look at, the occurrences, right? And that's when you start getting dinged. You know, we all know in our car insurance or whatever that else. But in risk management, uh, some business owners think, well, if I only have, I've only had one accident in five years, but that accident, you know, the guy lost his hand or, 
it was was pretty catastrophic. Or this other business owner says, you know, I've only I've I've had uh, twelve. Uh, very minor. We've only lost a few days of work over in the over the last five years. Well, what they what happens is they look at that as occurrences. They where there's smoke, there's fire. So those twelve or uh, small incidences versus the one large incident, many times will ding the company uh, more than just the one large incident. It may have cost the company or the the insurance company a lot more. So we try to help companies understand how how that works from a profit standpoint, and then also bringing in that human side of really about safety and just being compassionate. Do we not really care about our, our coworkers? Do we not care about our employees? Do we not really want them to go home to their family uh, every evening? And this is where we help identify uh, that uh, where they are in their safety journey, as we call it. And, and, and uh, we're really just really one accident, any of us, away from, from financial ruin. Yeah. And it does happen in a heartbeat. So it, you know, it helps if you're not afraid of safety, if you're looking for issues. Um, I think a lot of us make that change when it either impacts us personally, or we have a close friend or a relative that something happens and you go like, oh my gosh. So, you know, my thing will be to people, um, myself included, get some safety training uh, because you never know when you're going to need it. Um and, and, and let me just interrupt real quick. You know, I, uh, there's a there's a, a sign on one of my trainers, uh, Ed Tobby's desk over here. And he's 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 brilliant when he when he gets in front of people. But his sign says people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Yes. Um, and 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 so that's when we when they when we can make that personal connection. Uh, in those instances, I think that's where we start making an impact to be able to move the needle to say, yeah, you know what? Safety is important today and every day uh, moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be, it needs to be in all of our lives, no matter how young or old or anywhere in between we are. So that brings up another subject. The topic of safety isn't always a very sexy one, shall we say. Um, and people people think it's for somebody else until it impacts them. Do you see any generational differences in how people embrace safety? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think we, you know, when we were all young, we were indestructible, right? Um, yeah. So safety really, you know, I mean, only by the grace of God are a lot of us still here today, including right. myself. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so true. How we acted as, as teenagers and young adults, right? Um, and then as we get older, you know, we get a little wiser. And so we're not so much in regards to indestructible. So we get a little wiser. But then we turn that whole di that whole question around and said, when we're talking to some of the older people, they say, well, shoot, I've been doing this uh, my entire life and, and I've, nothing's happened to me up to this point. And so, yeah, it, I mean, it's so it's really depending on who you're talking to. But it, it, it is a, it certainly uh, from a generational difference. Absolutely. We see it all the time. And certainly we try to 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 gear how we approach safety and how we talk to audiences, depending on, you know, what that looks like to each and every single person. But again, you know, even even in the in the training side of things, we see uh, there in, in a lot of professions, we see a lot of, of the grain of the profession. A lot of the trainers are, are some of the older people because yeah. they've been in it for a while, but we're not seeing so much of the younger people coming into the business. Uh, and so that's one of the things our mission is also is trying to attract uh, new people into safety and understanding the importance and that it is a good career in itself mm -hmm. as well. And that's well, those are some of the things that we do uh, for for people is help train them to be safety instructors, whether it's as an independent contractor or within their company themselves, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point about making it a career, because um, it's one of those skills that can go across industries. You know, if you've got the safety background kind of the world is open to you. I think it's it's sort of like um, I see a lot of people in my line of work, um, human resources, learning and development, organizational development. It doesn't matter where you do it, even though each industry thinks it's unique and it's different than everybody else. It is unique, but a lot of those issues are not any different one place to another. They just show up in a little different manner. They just look a little bit different. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's, that's so true. That's so yeah. true. And, and my favorite um, ageist joke about, now this is from a diversity person, um, my favorite ageist joke about safety is 
want to know if you're old or not, fall down. If they laugh, <laughs> you're not. If they come running, you are. So, and I, and I say that because I've gone down in public once or twice in my life and uh, I haven't been laughed at in any case, but uh, yeah, I think about that these days. Let's not break a hip. Um, mm. So Rick, what are some of the, we talked about um, with the title here about safety leadership. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you see safety leaders dealing with these days? Well, yeah, I think, you know, when, when we look at most safety leaders, they've, in, in, in a lot of cases, they've been assigned uh, to that role and not necessarily trained for it. Uh, they got the short stick. Uh, they were the, in human resources or they were volunteered for it. Um, they become the accidental safety leaders themselves. So that has been a real uh, big challenge that it, it, that uh, we're dealing with a lot. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of people who are at the beginning stages of understanding what their safety journey is. So, um, but also those, those, we do see a lot of apathy uh, and indifference, certainly amongst uh, the companies, uh, sometimes the company owners um, yeah. and the people uh, in regards to it. Um, and so many times that the safety leaders, they're just doing, going at it alone. And, and that's what we want to do in this conference in regards to how do we, at regards to safety leadership, how do we engage those people who we are leading? How do we help get them more engaged? Uh, so we're not going it alone. Um, and, and, you know, uh, you know, so as a safety leader, we can help convince our coworkers and the management that importance, that sort of safety recommendations that, uh, that they need uh, within their company there. So it's, um, you know, our, I think it's going to be a unique conference uh, that, that, that I think most uh, safety people have not participated in before in regards to really giving them those tools to help get rid of that apathy, to, to do away with the indifference and really help bring along the village in regards to uh, safety and, and telling them we do care about you. We want you to go home to your family and we want you to be profitable as a company as well. And that was a good point about um, oftentimes you kind of get pushed into the job. I ended up in learning and development that way. Um, I was the per I didn't mind training as a part time role and a little bit of night classes and stuff like that, but I did not want to do it full time. And my organization pushed me in there, gave me a VP. This was years ago in the uh, 80, 89, I think it was. And I always say that I went kicking and screaming into this line of work and then found out it was my passion and I am really good at it and I really do want to do it. So one of the things that I found was that by going to organizations like yours, I could meet other people that were in that one person um, kind of like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders and I don't know where my resources are and do you have this and where would I go for that? And I think associations are really good at bringing people together. And then conferences are a whole different level because you get to see speakers, you get to network and you get to go into the vendor fair. Right. And a lot of times the vendors will educate you on the newest and best things that are coming into the industry that are out there already that you might not know about and then that are coming into the industry. And I think that um, just going to things like that and participating in associations up leveled my game so much and was such an important thing to me. Well, and that's what we hope to do with this conference is really kind of stimulate some new conversation that they've never had. And, and, and also in that, that networking, what it, they're be able to exchange ideas in regards to what has worked for uh, people and what has not worked, but having that, but, it, and, and again, you know, having the ability to, to, to have those vendors out there to, to be able to bounce ideas and certainly maybe integrate some of those safety uh, uh, gadgets or uh, safety uh, uh, protocol Everything that they, they have. have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's so many right. apps right. these days. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. The apps. Yeah. How the technology that's involved in safety. I mean, that certainly has taken safety a long ways in regards to technology has really helped uh, safety move along uh, in, in, in just in the last 10 years. Yeah. And, and I'm going to ask um, Yasmin, who's sitting in the background, to put up the link for the conference here in case people want to, thank you, in case people want to head over to that link, feel free to do that. And um, I think we can also put that in the chat area, in the um, event, in the comment area. I also want to invite people, if you've got questions for Rick or for me, feel free to put them in the comment area. We can see those 
and we'll get to them as soon as we possibly can. So definitely we're looking for some interaction here too. If you've got questions or concerns or thoughts, put them in the comments in LinkedIn and we will get to them and we will, we will talk about them. Okay. So let me see where I am on our, um, well, yeah. I have a question for you. I have a question for you, Laurie. What, what yeah. kinds of things uh, do you see um, leaders struggling with these days on your side? Yeah, so I tend to speak across different industries, and I do do a lot in um, what we women call the male-dominated industries, the ones where they've been very, um, very male-driven for years, and oftentimes in industries where there's an office setting and there's an in-the-field setting, so different kinds of safety come up in, in the conversations. What I'm seeing leaders deal with is making this transition from what I'll call my father's workplace. Um, I, when I started working on my keynote, I started thinking back to, well, when did these kind of rules that we work by come around and realize that it was my dad and mom, but mom stayed home with the kids after, uh, after she started having my brothers and then me. Um, she stayed home to raise us where my father went to work in the big city of Philadelphia every day from 40, 50 miles outside the city. Now he worked for the railroad so he could get the free transportation. Once he got to the train, we were way far out. So um, he worked for a long time like that. And I'm remembering the way he talked about work and the things that he talked about working for an organization for 40 years. And that this is the World War II generation. So they passed their rules down to us, the baby boomers, and we've passed it to Gen X. And then in some cases, there was a screeching halt because the millennials came into the workplace and just like the boomers came in and sort of shifted a lot of things, the millennials came in and they were the shift. Um, it's not that Gen X didn't, but what I see in leadership is that Gen X leaders tend to go more by the boomer rule set than the newer rule set. Um, I also, so I see people who are, let's say above 48, 50 years old, the, the youngest, or I'm sorry, the oldest millennials are about 41, 42 years old right now. Um, so the generation above that, those leaders are struggling with the what's going on behind me too, with the younger generations and boomers are really struggling. And what I see is that boomer leaders are oftentimes saying, well, that's for the next guy or woman to deal with. Um, or, uh, I, they, they, they just got to get their, shall we say stuff together. They got to get it together. And what I'm seeing is the workforce isn't coming back around ever to the old ways of thinking. And you see that pushback with like work from home and, you know, get back to the office and we've all got to be here for the culture and things. What I've noticed is that, um, there are companies that went into startup probably within the last 10 years, but have leaders that are probably in their thirties, maybe pushing 40. And they, if they, if they started the company themselves, many of them run them differently. So I'm seeing a lot more collaboration, less um, pyramid to the top. It's there, but it's different with the way people show up at work. Um, I happen to love this company that's local to us here in Scottsdale called Trainual. I watch everything they do. So Chris Ronzio, if you're listening, um, I want to interview you. Um, and I really think Trainual has done, they're just sort of my touchstone to what leadership looks like going forward. So when they screw something up, they come out and they say, hey, we screwed that up. We said the wrong thing. We didn't know that term was bad. And they immediately retract. And like, it's kind of the, that um, Maya Angelou quote, when you know better, do better. So once somebody brings something to your attention, you shift and you're like, oh, I had no idea. Let me, let me change that up. Um, and they began to work from home at the beginning of the pandemic. And Trainual is actually an automated or online playbook. So everybody needs a playbook in their business. Chris is a master organizer. And so he created the, actually he bought software from people that he mentored that didn't want it, started using it with clients and then rolled it out. If what I hear on the internet is true. And you can talk about aging of the system. The system basically 
a lot of us have the knowledge in our heads, but we've never put it on paper. Trainual is like a way that you can get this stuff online and accessible to everybody mm -hmm. in one program. And I love that concept um, because I don't want to have to keep reinventing the wheel. So uh, when they went work from home, everything that they did wrong, they brought to their clients and said, did, did, we tried that, didn't work. Here's what we found did work for us. You try it too. And they got on the virtual zoom kind of conferences and stuff very early in the game and it's just a different way of approaching things um than what i see in companies that have been around for a long time you know it's uh somebody said to me once a long time ago it's easier to have a good reputation if you start and you build it that way rather than you really screw up big time and you do something egregious and then you try to undo it. People have long memories. And I would say right. it's the same thing with corporate cultures and leadership. Um, even if we make conscious efforts to change, it's almost in the walls if, you, if you're back where the walls are. So it's almost in the walls and it comes out and it's in the culture. And it's really like you have to right. really dig at it and expose it to the light of day and then say, how are we shifting this thing? And right. that's what millennials and Gen Z are looking for is is a whole different way of leading and being at work. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, when you think about the future um, and how things have changed um, moving forward and certainly how that mindset has changed, you know, yeah. then we as leaders uh, need to be prepared for that future. How would you recommend that the leaders get prepared for uh, that future of, of leadership? You know? I think that if leaders are currently in that place where they're resisting, ask yourself why you're resisting and start looking hard at yourself. So when I started doing diversity work formal, formally a couple of years ago, I always did it informally and it was in my model and, and all of that, but I went formally into it. All of a sudden you start following different people, you start reading different articles and you realize some of the things that you may have done, said, or whatever in the past. And you're like, well, boy, do I have to go back and apologize? Or do I just start doing things differently and, and better and, and in a more inclusive way for people? So I would say it's that way with leadership. When you realize you needed to make a shift, mine came when I read two, two things. One was that, um, that step into diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging work. The other was before that, and it was reading Brene's, Brene Brown's Dare to Lead and, and then going through a course on it. And I realized that I had led one way and it was working and people didn't seem to be bothered by it. You know, they told me I was a pretty good leader. And so then I looked at this and thought, wow, things are shifting and changing. And I started seeing that about 10 years ago, that things are shifting and changing and it's a whole different set of rules coming and thought, well, I'm not in corporate anymore. But then as my company has grown and I have contractors that work for me, um, it's been leading in a whole different way. So for other leaders, I think you got to keep your ear to the ground. And if it's bothering you that people are offended by things or if it's bothering you that you see this stuff and you think these people are crazy, well, and by the way, that's not always the best word to use. Um, but <laughs> people are, are are out of their minds, whatever it is. Um, this is this is wrong. I need to school them. Step back. It may not be your workplace anymore, and you don't want to be that outdated, irrelevant uh, leader that can happen so easily, so quickly to us. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ah. Yasmin says she loves Dare to Lead. Yes, that is that is a really good book. And if you're not a big Brene Brown fan, um, it's spelled B-R-E-N-E. -E. Look her up. She works with special forces and, um, uh, shall we say, very manly men along the way in her work and talks about vulnerability. And she's not that crazy about vulnerability herself, but she really does a great job of exposing people to, with courage, there's always vulnerability. And she's, she has said that you cannot be courageous without exposing yourself and being vulnerable. And nobody's managed to pull that apart yet. So, 
Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the comment box at this point. So let me see what else we were thinking about talking about here. Um, tell me about the, or tell all of us about the resources and things and where people can find them on your website then, Rick. Oh, certainly. Um, thank you. Uh, our, our website is acnsc.org. That's Arizona Chapter National Safety Council, acnsc.org. And you can go there and you can find, uh, and it, there's a tab at the top that says courses. You can go or backslash courses, get you right to everything that we offer. And the courses are for both the student and the trainer. Um, if you're in a company and you are, you need to learn some things or you need to start training, we can certainly got those resources to help you uh, be able to take that and distribute that uh, amongst your uh, amongst your company there as well. So uh, the uh, the number of courses is really in the hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, it, you can really get overwhelmed in regards to all the things that we have on our website. I mean, I'm proud of what we have, but at the same time, there's there's really just a core group, and we talked about those already in regards to I think what most people are going to need and what they're going to uh, use uh, in their in their companies. But I think you know one of the things I want to bring forward is is the, the the biggest cause of, of any loss uh, for any company is an automobile accident. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many times have we sent the front desk person to do the deposit? Uh, and what, ha you know, the risk that you are putting on her, him, uh, that are, that are, that, that are going to go make that deposit um, and on the company, uh, depending on uh, the severity of the accident. Um, when I worked for the Arizona Small Business Association, we had a we had a a, a, a division in Tucson, and one of uh, our employees down there was on their way to a a trade show. Uh, they ended up uh, crashing into a motorcyclist and injuring the motorcyclist pretty severely. I mean, certainly, um, you know, we were we were protected from an insurance standpoint. But those are the types of things. These are accidents. These aren't they aren't called on purposes. They are accidents and most and people aren't out there really meaning to to get injured. But those are the kinds of things that happen at a blink of an eye and can change your trajectory as a company, as a as a, a, a you know, as an employee uh, in just a blink of an eye. So those are the things that we want to always be aware of uh, and making sure that we make people aware that they need to be aware. Right. And I think yeah. that's a lot of times what happens is that we, we just kind of are walking through the steps day by day and forget to be mindful in the things and those steps that we're taking each day and making sure that we're doing the right things and, and, and uh, being safe and, in, and, in, in all those steps that we take. You know, the other thing that comes up for me there is the emotional impact of an accident. Um, because I know I've worked for big organizations where sometimes there's been accidents. In one case, there was one employee ran into another employee in an intersection. I believe one, I believe the one that got hit died. Oh um, the other person had been out uh, for happy hour. I'll leave oh. it at that. And oh. ended up, I believe, with some jail time. Uh, but you know, anything can happen. So I think sometimes we think of the accident when we get in our brain instead of our heart, we start thinking about the, the impact to the business, you know, mentally and the, oh, the, the cost and this and that and the reputation. But then we think about the humans in those accidents. And if you've ever even had a fender bender, the disruption to your life while you're making all the contacts that you have to, and you know, this gets disrupted and that gets disrupted. And how am I going to get to work? And how will I pick up my kids at, you know, daycare? And, and there's just so many things that, and then the human toll that happened when that accident I talked about happened. And I'm sure the one you're talking about too, um, it, it ripples out into the whole workforce uh, and everybody's got an opinion, but there's a lot of heartfelt sentiment and opinions going around. And it's just so, it's not only the disruption, but it's the, the emotional and psychological disruption to people too. And, and those are sometimes, those are things we forget. Yeah, sometimes we yeah. just are checking a box on, you know, on a piece of paper in regards to uh, yep. incidents, right? But yep. the human toll, uh, both to those who are injured and those who are, you know, who are affected by that injury uh, directly and indirectly. And we, we forget about what 
what that creates in in a work in a workplace and in a in a in a in a family home too. Mm-hmm. So and I think that's and those are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about at the, the conference in, in regards to that safety leadership. How do we how do we bring that human side into our leadership to be able to bring those people along, to bring people around us and be able to do this um, as a village rather than as a single going, right. going forward, right? Right. So, and we do yeah. have, I think, one comment over on LinkedIn. Um, up oh, two comments. Um, the wild driving we see here now in the Valley means that your employee can be injured at any time, even when driving defensively. Yeah. Oh, and yes. driving is the most important safety challenge right now. I agree. And any other safety leaders that are on, um, please weigh in too. And uh, Mike says, very informative and would love to speak to more companies in 2023 about workplace violence and the impact physical and sexual assaults have on companies and staffs. And I know Mike and Mike teaches self-defense. And so, um, and so, you know, call him if you need somebody like that, uh, because I know he does a lot of work with women and how to defend themselves should something happen. Well, and if people don't feel safe at work, in it, that you know, workplace violence is, is, is a reality in today's world. And if people don't feel safe at work, what kind of productivity uh, are, you, are we going to have? Right. Yeah, I just lost right. an audio there. Can, yeah. can you hear me now? <laughs> so. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. I just I just turned over to this. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So I think if people aren't safe, at, if feel feeling safe, our productivity all across the board goes goes down, and um, yeah. that's the um, uh, that's the danger that we have. So we always that certainly is something that we want to make sure that we're we're cognizant of all the time too. Yeah, and, and Nancy put up another comment about every business today should be looking at active assailant insurance coverage. I agree. And I remember back, um, so I happened at one point in my banking career to be put into the security officer role that had to worry about um, bank robberies and things like that. Um, And boy, it was probably the early 90s when was the first time that HR people and security officers and, and folks were looking at what happens if domestic violence comes into the workplace. Um, And in the bank, we're open to everybody. So, you know, I was, I was sitting in the back of a branch basically, and anybody could have come in at any time. So you never know. And you, it, it, this morning's news was just insane with one shooting after the other, after the other, after the other. And I think it's something that we really have to give some pause and think about. Um, so yeah, active, active assailant insurance coverage wow. is something for folks to look into. It's a sad state, but um, so we talked a little bit about the conference earlier, uh, Rick, do you want to talk about what your hope is for that day? What some of the topics are that people are going to be talking about? You, you bet. Uh, yeah. So, uh, just to back up, it's, it's on Thursday, March 23rd. It's a one day conference. We're going to be at the double tree Hilton in Tempe, which is right off the I-10. Um, typically we'll get Anyone that's interested in safety uh, or in safety leadership, uh, we'll see a lot of uh, HR professionals. We'll see a lot of safety professionals. We'll see a lot of construction contractors and subcontractors. We'll see a lot of business owners. Um, so it, it's and it's and and it really is for everybody. Um, uh, this year's conference uh, is going to be unique and and unlike that we've ever had before because we're we're really as we talked about we're talking about. How do we motivate employees? Uh, what are the tools that we can give to our safety leaders and uh, to and talk about stories of motivation? And those are the kinds of tools I think is is are such great learning tools for us as trainers and teachers is to use stories of motivation to be able to bring people around us and to bring them into our way of thinking. And so uh, I'm just really excited uh, about the the level of speakers we've got. Uh, 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 a lady uh, coming down from Portland, Oregon. Her name is Jen uh, Donahue, uh, a military person. Uh, was uh, I think she uh, helped with the uh, disaster in uh, Japan, the nuclear disaster in Japan when that happened. She was the lead in in that place. There's a lot of stories that she's going to tell about that. We've got a, a young lady who was a, a, a uh, an air uh, warthog pilot uh, coming up from Tucson. Um, and uh, her name, let's see, is uh, here we are, uh, Tammy Barlett. Uh, Tammy uh, has got 
uh, as a retired military as well. So, I, I mean, we're, we're talking about people who know safety at the, at the very pinnacle of what uh, safety is. So I, if, you're, if you've got the day available, I think it'd be well worth your, your time. It's $129 for the day, which includes uh, uh, lunch, breakfast, snacks, um, and that's for members and $149 for non-members. Um, and we do have reduced room rates. So if you're coming in from out of town, so the Doubletree is certainly be glad to host you as well. So, uh, and you can register uh, very easily at uh, ACNSC, as we talked about, Arizona Chapter National Safety Council, acnsc.org. And you'll see right there at the slider, you can see uh, uh, that the conference is there, but it's uh, Southwest Safety Congress is, is the... Uh, is the uh, url that you'll see on it so oh, i'm hoping that uh, we'll knock it out of the park this year we've had such a great response just in the uh, couple of weeks that we've advertised for it already um we've we've got uh, uh probably almost uh, half the booths sold already uh we've got a, a whole bunch of uh, people already registered and typically we don't get uh, people registering for this uh, until about a month out so we're 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 pretty excited about the response and we're, we're getting so far. Yeah. Yeah. We thought it would be a cool idea to do this LinkedIn live. Um, I'll be speaking about the changing rules of leadership and, um, and I've done this with other folks and it's such fun to do the LinkedIn live. We get good comments and um, let's see, we have a couple more uh, for those who are watching afterwards. Distracted driving. Thank you, Ed is a huge issue that companies can influence through effective policies and procedures that discourage Device use while driving, yes, because hands-free is not distraction-free. Yes, yes, yes. I do not take phone calls in the car. Um, the roads are just too crazy here. Even the surface streets, you've got to be on guard at all times. We have a lot of pedestrian deaths here in Phoenix because everybody's out walking, riding bicycles. And, uh, and we are a town of um, light jumpers, so like red light runners. So whenever my family is in town, I say, okay, here's some things to know about the road. And one of them is before you pull out, look both ways, because I have almost been hit. I want to say half a dozen times over the 13 years I've been here, where it's just people are running through the red light and uh, you've got a full green and don't go because <laughs> you will be hurt. Right. Um, and then Mike says, Merck did a study how one violent assault can cost that company up to three times that person's annual income in total dollars, medical, legal, et cetera. That's how I've stayed busy for 25 plus years. And thanks again for all that ACNSC does. Yes, awesome. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Mike, is there anything that you want to leave us with a comment, uh, something you didn't get to talk about? Um, best piece of advice, any of that? Well, uh, I think, um, you know, I think, you know, th thriving in these um, hybrid environments and is and using the people first philosophy is, is really going to be um, important moving forward. Um, I think uh, finding success by owning the whole, meaning, uh, you know, we need to everybody own everything and what we're going to it. Um, rethinking and reshaping uh, our training and development. And that's what we're hoping to do. Uh, and that's what we uh, hope to do with uh, with all the people that we run through our, our doors here. And the importance of connecting to employees well-being. And I think that's one of the things, even in the comments that we talked about, it, you know, we, we need to show them that we care. We need to show them that people do care. We need to sh show them how they can care for other people as well. Um, yes. And, 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 just know that that we're all making a difference. It yeah. may not seem like it some days. Um, you know, uh, I, I like to tell the starfish story. I don't, you know, a lot of people may have already heard this, but you know, where all these starfish <laughs> have washed up on the beach, there's hundreds and hundreds up there, and there's this guy throwing them back into the into the ocean. And here comes another guy says, "Why are you doing this? There's no possible way you're going to make a difference. You know, there's hundreds of of starfish out here." And, uh, and, and as the guy picks it up and throws it, another starfish, and he says, well, it made a difference to that one, right? So yes. what, what I'm saying is that what we need to do is stay in the game because someone's life really, really does depend on it. And that's the beauty of it. We're all in the, in the business of saving lives. And that's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful mission. Yes. Thank you. And one last comment. Kathleen Gramsci, a former speaker at the conference, is endorsing it. 
as a great thing. Hi, Kathleen. Um, she and I are friends as well. So uh, it's been my pleasure, Rick, to really speak with you today. Um, and if we, I, I think let's put up some contact info. I believe Yasmin has contact info and freebies. So if you want to get in touch with Aligned at Work, a great way to do it is support at alignedatwork.com. And you can also go on our website and click any number of things uh, there to, to actually get time on a calendar or conversation. There's our website, alignedatwork.com. Um, we have a tip sheet for you as well. If you're into, if you're wondering how to get more inclusion into your environment, because people are struggling with that. They don't really know what it means. These are some practical tips. Um, I'm a, I'm a farm kid. So I am, if nothing else, practical, raised by sturdy German people, as I like to say. And so these are, these are down to earth, feet on the ground. How am I going to go about this? So you can go and use that bit.ly link for 10 inclusion tips. At the very end, I believe we've got a um, QR code for you as well. And then anything else I'm missing, Yasmin? I'll just look to see if anything else is coming up. Oh, yep. If you want to get in touch with me, laurieatalignedatwork.com. Um, you're probably watching this on LinkedIn Live. You might be watching it after the fact on YouTube, but you can find me on LinkedIn by putting my name in, you know, Laurie Battaglia, all run together into one long word. We'll get you um, to find me. And then Aligned at Work also has a page on LinkedIn where you can follow us there. Um, this recording will go live, will go up as a recording almost immediately after the live, I believe. And then we will also have it on our YouTube channel, the Aligned at Work YouTube channel afterwards. And Rick, you may see pieces of it on their site as well or in social media. So, and Rick, how would they get in touch with you? What do you they can call us at uh, 602-264-2394. Um, we've got uh, safety experts and consultants help you on your safety journey, or they can go to our website at www.acnsc.org. Very good. Okay. And are there any other questions in the box? I know that uh, Kathleen is interested in seeing if psychological safety comes up as well as physical safety, because yes, I generally talk about that. Um, and Mike is saying hi to Kathleen. So our little community here comes together. Awesome. Um, thank you everybody for attending today. Let us know if there's anything that either I or Mike can, or Rick can do for you. And we hope to see you at that conference on March 23rd. And it's local. It's not terribly expensive. I, I think it's a like a really great price. It's so bring your people as well. Bring <laughs> others that are interested as well. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Okay.